Can somebody indicate to me that they can see the screen and hear me talk?
Thank you. Uh, I'm running a little bit behind. I broke my glasses this morning, so I've got my sunglasses on. Uh, I, I was going to, the computer gets extremely hot, so I was going to try to do this outside. I did my last lecture on Wednesday outside, and it's too cold outside, so I had to move everything back in. So if you want to go get you another cup of coffee or soda, something like that, we'll get started in about five minutes. So I'm just letting you know I'm running behind today. So we'll get started in about five minutes. Things just keep getting better. I just dropped my cereal spoon. Uh, first, the test, the exam one opens today at noon. It is already posted, ready to open. It consists of a number of questions. I don't know how many questions because the matching questions has four or five parts, three, four or five parts. And so each one of those counts an individual amount. But it, <coughs> it is <coughs> multiple choice matching true, false, and short answer. Multiple choice, matching, true, false, and, and short answer. It's a two-hour test unless you have a specific accommodation. Uh, it is a, unlike everything else that's on uh, here. It is a time test, which means you have two hours to do it. You only have one opportunity to do it. You have an entire week, you have a week and a few extra hours to do it. You have until 11.55 next Wednesday to do it. But once you press begin, once you press begin, the test is going to be submitted in two hours. The test will be submitted in two hours.
No. I ha- but the reason the grades are not put in is because uh, I have to grade the short answer questions. But I will start grading the other stuff while you're doing the exam, everything that you've done up until this point. And always with exams, uh, unlike some of the other stuff, I usually grade them uh, in the in the week's interval time that you're doing exams. I wait till after the deadline. Somebody asked me they had turned something in two weeks ago and I hadn't graded yet. I don't grade stuff till after the deadline. Uh, so once the, and then I grade them in batches, usually on the weekend. Uh, and that allows me to go through and grade everybody's one, the whole class paper at the same time. But the exams, you won't get a grade until I grade it, but all exams are graded at the maximum within a week. Okay. Everything else is scored except for the short answer. And then I just go in and score the short answer. Usually there's four or five short answer questions. So it doesn't take that long. And I put an announcement up that the grades are posted. So the grades will be posted, uh, uh, within a week, it's usually less than a week. It's usually less than a week, barring anything, barring sickness or barring, you know, bad weather, inclement, you know, if we had a hurricane or something like that. But, you know, we're getting towards the end of the season. Uh, so it's a two hour time limit. Uh, you obviously, uh, it is open book, open notes. It, it is taken from number one, the student notes, which you fill the blanks in. Number two, Dr. Oler's slides, okay, which are the slides we usually look at. We're doing these slides only because this will help with our uh, 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 lab practical because it's the, it's, it's the exact copy of the slides that are on the lab practical. They just got more information, but exact copy of the slides on the lab practical. And uh, the recorded lectures, so the re- I have recorded, there are recorded lectures up from last semester. So you have a recorded lecture up for everything else. I, if I have the unfinished lectures, the unfinished lectures, in other words, the unedited lectures up on YouTube, uh, my YouTube thing is Florida Computer Nerd, uh, but they're, uh, they're unedited. Uh, but if you wanted to watch the ones that we actually do, they're up there. Uh, and you'd hear the fact that I'd say we're going to start late on five minutes because I haven't edited the part out yet, but they're there. But the lecture that you have up there that from last semester is the same material that we talked about uh, on last semester. And so that would be, so the, the, uh, the material comes from number one, it comes from the student notes, number two, Dr. Oler slides, number three, something that I might have emphasized in the recorded lecture. And I'd emphasize the same thing every semester. This is a, I'm going on the fifth year of teaching this, and it's always the same thing I emphasize, especially with short answer questions, because I give you hints as we go along as to what might be on a short answer question. Uh, obviously, I would prefer you didn't Google the answers, okay? But a lot of the a lot of the things are already out there on Quizlet. I know that because I've done it myself. Uh, but be very careful because I know it's out there. Because I know it's out there, I sometimes go uh, go in and change some of the answers. And so if you just quit, you just Google a thing on Quizlet, and you got the same uh, call of the question, which means the first part of the question, and you you see that they wrote wrote that it's true, and you write it's true. And usually I have three or four of those together. And what I do, that gives me sort of a barometer as to who's using Quizlet and not paying attention to the questions. Short answer questions, you cannot plagiarize, okay? You cannot go out to the internet. You cannot go out to the internet and look up the short answer question and copy and paste. Do you do that? Okay, you'll get a zero. You do that for all of them, you and I'll have a talk and then you, you may have a talk with the committee at school, okay? Uh, school has a uh, has a intense policy about plagiarism. So on the short answer questions, you cannot plagiarize. You can read the slides, you can read your notes, you can read your slides, read your notes, and do the answer. Always remember to put something down. If it's a five point question, if you put anything down that that pertains to the topic, you're going to get at least one point. Okay. If you leave it blank, you get zero points. The more stuff that you put down that pertains to the question, but it's not an essay question. Some of the things can be answered in one sentence, okay? Spelling does count. If you don't know how to spell, I'm sorry, okay? Then you probably ought to put your answer on a Word document and uh, uh, run it through spell check to make sure you got it spelled right, because I'm not gonna read something 
that uh, is incorrectly spelled or is not in good structure. You know, I'm not an English teacher, but I need to be able to read it, and I'm not going to try to interpret your reading. Uh, you, there again, let me emphasize one more time. It's a two-hour test. Once you press begin, okay, it, you bought the test. Once you press begin at two hours, it doesn't matter if you log out. It doesn't matter if you log out of your computer, log out of your school account, log out from, you know, uh, go off the grid in two hours, it's going to submit. Okay. And that's going to be your grade. So don't do that. Okay. Make sure that you, number one, you're ready to take the exam and that you're in a place that's got a stable internet and there's not going to be any thunderstorms coming. Okay. Uh, those types of things. Uh, if for some reason you can't take the exam, if for some reason you can't take the exam, number one, you need to notify me before the deadline before the deadline, which is one week from the day at 11.55, that you were unable to take the exam. And the reason for being unable to take the exam, you will get a makeup exam. The makeup exam is subject to the fact that I may make it short answer in essay, okay? It's stated in the syllabus that if you had to take the makeup exam, it might be short answer in essay, okay? So uh, your, your best bet is to take the exam, uh, And because you should, you know, you should be able to go do pretty well on the exam. Okay. You should be able to do pretty well on the exam. It's right out of the notes and right out of the short answer stuff. Please let's not talk, let's not talk about accommodations on the chat. Okay. Let's not talk about any type of accommodations on the chat. That's not proper chat conversation. Okay. Uh, anybody who, who I got, who, who I got a thing for an accommodation has the accommodation already put into the exam. Okay. So that's, that's all I can say. Um, but if you, if you have an accommodation and you're concerned about it, then send me a private email, send me a private email and we can discuss that. But anybody who I've received an accommodation for, that accommodation has already been put into the exam and you, it, it is taken care of, okay? Uh, oh, the other thing is if you decide for whatever reason, the exam is due at 11.55. If you decide to start the exam at 11 o'clock, you're gonna get 55 minutes to take the exam. You're not gonna get two hours, okay? The two hours only pertains to if you start the exam in a timely fashion before the two hour, before the deadline. Okay, if you started at 11, you're gonna get 55 minutes and at 11.55, it's gonna submit automatically. So do not wait to the last minute. There's no reason to wait to the last minute. Okay, no reason to wait to the last minute. Uh, you know, just go ahead and take the exam at some point, take it the weekend, take it next week. You have till next Wednesday. At 11.55, you have the next Wednesday at 11.55 to take the exam. It is a two-hour exam, two-hour exam. Once you press begin, it's going to go, okay? And at two hours, it's going to submit automatically. So obviously, if you have problems and you've just started the exam, then you need to, uh, if you have problems and you just started the exam, uh, email me okay but i might not be able to help you because uh there again i check my emails when i get an opportunity but uh uh it might be some point till i help you if you've gotten to the end of the exam and decide you don't want to take the exam or you want to repeat the exam that doesn't happen okay so make sure that you prepare for the exam you've gone over your notes you've gone over the slides you feel comfortable because even though this is an open book, open notes, okay, there's enough questions there that you don't have all day if you've not looked at your notes to be able to find the information. So make sure you're comfortable with your notes, that you've read through them and you're, you're familiar with them, and that you've looked through the slides. And we're talking about Dr. Oler's slides. We're, we're going over these slides for our practical, but you've, you've looked through Dr. Oler's slides and you're comfortable with those slides and you're ready to go with the exam, okay? So that's all I've got to say about the exam. It is. It will open at noon, it is open for a week, okay? These are some of the first slides like we looked at the other day. I'm gonna go down to the uh, 
and you have these access these slides. Unfortunately, uh, Canvas has a problem with uh, storage. And so if you storage, if you store these as PowerPoints, and I forgot that they were stored as a PDF, it take you'll run out of storage on Canvas before the semester ends. And as you're well aware, I've got a lot of stuff stored on here. But this is some of the stuff that we talked about initially. These the uh, this is two sections of slides. The reason we don't uh, go through these slides uh, I, as a general rule, although I do use them quite a bit. Is because of the volume of the slides. A lot of times you may have three sections of slides with 100 slides each. Okay, but we're going to go through these slides uh, as part of the study for the practical. Okay, first thing, you know, we talk about epithelium. There are four types of tissue again. Okay, the first question on the lab practical is A. Okay, general type of tissue that is either epithelium, connective tissue, muscle tissue, or nervous tissue. Okay. We're talking about epithelium now. Epithelium, a simple epithelium involved in absorption, secretion, or filtration. Cells are flattened and cytoplasm is sparse. Uh, where function where rapid diffusion is priority, example, kidneys and lungs. And they either can be endothelium, which is the lining of the lymphatic vessels and the blood vessels of the heart, or mesothelium, which is serous membranes in the body cavities. And we looked at body cavities, okay? This is a picture out of your textbook, okay? Dr. Oler had removed this descriptive stuff, okay? And as you recall, the picture, this is what is on your practical, okay? This picture was lifted, okay? Uh, this picture was taken from the slide and enlarged and is on your lab practical. And so this is simple squamous epithelium, okay? And you can see it's in the kidney glomerulus or the air sacs of the lungs. Remember, part B is the specific type of tissue. This is simple squamous epithelium. It is epithelium, that's part A. Part B is simple squamous epithelium. Part C is a location, and here's the location. That's why these slides are very valuable, okay? Because they provide you the information that you need, that you need to answer the question and answer it fully, okay? So this is, this is the, uh, the um, the information that you need, okay, the information that you need to answer the questions. And so it, this is a good study source. I want to make sure that you were aware that we have these slides. And like I say, Dr. Oler had the slides, but without this information present, okay, because she would lecture about the information. And I, I wanted to show you these slides so that you can go over here and look at them. So that's simple squamous epithelium, okay. Simple cuboidal epithelium involved in secretion and absorption forms walls, small ducts, and glands. And here's the example, simple cuboidal epithelium. So is epithelium, that's part A. Simple cuboidal is part B. And a location would be one of these locations. You know, kidney ductules, ducts, and uh, collecting cyst portions of small glands, okay? And so this is what it looks like on the uh, uh, Practical. This is the picture from the practical that's enlarged. Obviously, you know, this, this gives you an idea of some of the information here, you know, and talks about the apical surface. This is the apical surface because this is the lumen, and then this is the basal surface. Simple columnar epithelium, you know, either have microvilli or cilia, okay, some may contain mucus secreting goblet cells. If it's involved in absorption and secretion, it can have ciliated cells that move the mucus, okay? It, it can be involved in, in absorption and secretion. You can have ciliated cells that move mucus, digestive tract, gallbladder, some ducts of some glands. And this is epithelium, simple columnar. This is some of the locations where it can be found. If you will notice, these are tall rectangular cells and all the nuclei are essentially lined up. Okay, they're essentially lined up with a goblet cell here. Okay, essentially lined up with a goblet cell here. And they have some kind of modification on their border. They have microvilli. Uh, but we need, need, we need higher magnification to see that. Okay, that's a 640 magnification. And that is the last magnification you can have on a light microscope without an oil immersion lens uh, or thereabouts, somewhere around there. And we need an oil immersion lens to get an idea that these are microvilli there, but that's simple columnar. 
Pseudostratified columnar, <coughs> cell varies in height. Pseudo means false. Many cells are ciliated, appear to be multi-layered, but tissue is in fact a single layer of epithelium uh, involved in secretion located mainly in upper digestive tract. And here's that example. See, this is elongated cells. The nuclei are at different levels. They've got goblet cells here, upper respiratory tract. This is the trachea and the bronchi, except these, if we could actually follow one cell all the way through, you would see that it's attached to the basal membrane and has an apical surface. So that's why it's called pseudostratified. So it's an epithelium pseudostratified columnar. Then we get into stratified epithelial tissue. It involves more than one layer. It can either be keratinized or non-keratinized, okay? Keratinized would be something that's on the external surface. Keratinized would be on the external surface. Non-keratinized would be on the internal surface, okay? Non-keratinized because we don't need that uh, waxy layer on the internal surface, okay? Free surface squamous with deeper cuboidal or columnar layers. Uh, and we're going to talk about this next week. This is stratified squamous epithelium, okay? Stratified squamous epithelium, and it's going to be found inside a number of places, but the oral pharynx is one. The reason it's stratified is it's, it provides protection, okay? And because it provides protection, uh, you can imagine, and I'll use the example of a potato chip, chewing the potato chip and taking off a few of these layers, okay? And then cell, additional cell layers to be produced to uh, compensate for that. Stratified cuboidal, quite where we don't even have a we don't have a slide. Stratified columnar, also limited distribution. Don't worry about those. There is no slide for that. Okay, there is no slide for that, so don't worry about it. Stratified epithelial tissue, transitional epithelium lines hollow urinary organs. The bladder, the ureters, and the urethra. The urethra is the op is the connecting channel between the bladder and the external uh, external area. Uh, the ureters are connections between the kidneys and the bladder. Okay, basal cells, the the cells that closest to the basal layer are cuboidal columnar, and these can change in shape to in allow for the rapid flow of urine and allow for increase. And so this is the only one. So this is epithelium and its specific type is transitional, and it's found in the ureters, in the bladder, and part of the urethra, okay? And it looks like this. So the, the basal cells are more in cuboidal type shape, and they can go from six layers to three layers, okay? They can go from six layers to three layers. Glander epithelium we talked about. There are not going to be any slides on that. And we looked at those slides. We just talked about, do know the difference between an endocrine gland and an exocrine gland. Remember, an endocrine gland has no, has no ducts, okay? This would be a gland with a duct. An endocrine gland has no ducts, and so it makes whatever the hormone is, and then that hormone is, uh, it makes the hormone, and then that hormone is, uh, uh, the vesicle fuses with the cell with the cell outer surface, and then the outer surface. Uh, opens up and that hormone is released to the interstitial space and when it's released to the interstitial space, then it, it goes uh, crosses interstitial space and, and the blood vessels right there it's it's absorbed into the blood vessels and then it is uh, taken to where it needs to for action, okay? Here's connective tissue, that's our, so that was epithelium. Where there is no keratinized stratified squamous epithelium on the exam, okay? The only, the only stratified squamous epithelium we have is non-keratinized, okay? We, I don't have a picture of the skin because the next chapter is about the skin, okay? So there is no keratinized. And Dr. Oler's note, she brought a picture in to show you the difference between keratinized and non-keratinized, which is good. But there is no keratinized epithelium on the lab practical. So don't look, don't put that down as an answer. There shouldn't be a, a slide of that. So this is connective tissue. Remember, that's the most disjointed of the ones. There's connective tissue proper, cartilage, bone, and blood. Bone and blood are easy. 
Cartilage is a little tricky. Connective tissue proper is not too bad, okay? This is comparisons, okay, in regards to cells and matrix and general features. Uh, connective tissue proper of the three cartilages, okay? And a bone, see bone and blood you can get. Bone and blood you can get, it's not hard. And we're not gonna go through the individual fibers. That was covered fairly well when we looked at the areola tissue. Different types of connective tissue, okay? We have connective tissue. It's divided up in connective tissue proper, loose and dense, okay? Also into cartilage, we have three different types of cartilage, into bone, into blood. The connective tissue proper, the loose is the areola tissue, which is the slide that we looked at all the fibers. They, we have the fat tissue, the adipose, and the reticular, which is what I talk about, and looking like a, 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 a grapevine with grapes hanging down. Then we have the proper, which is the uh, dense regular is tendons and ligaments, and so all the fibers in one direction. Dense irregular is uh, fibrous coatings around joints and uh, organs and things like that, so it stresses in different, uh, different uh, directions. And then elastic, Arita tissue, most widely distributed, supports and binds others, universal packing. And so here's the Rela tissue, okay? And this, like I say, this is the one we looked at in the schematic. So it would be connective tissue, proper, loose areola, okay? And so if you had connective tissue and you had areola, if you had connective tissue as your A answer and you had areola as your B answer, that would be okay. But if you want to put all this, it's fine too, okay? Uh, but connective tissue, connective tissue is the general type of tissue. And then if you wanted to put specific, it'd be proper, loose areola. Or if you just put a reload, that's fine. Okay, either way, I'm not gonna count off points because uh, I want to know it's connective tissue and under number A, and I'll, under number B, I want to know it's areola tissue. And here's some locations where it's found, okay? So that's areola tissue. Adipose tissue is fat, it's found in any places that uh, for either shock absorption, there's fat around the kidneys, it's for insulation and for energy storage. You know, we have a lot of, a lot of us have a lot of energy storage. It's hard to miss that one, okay? And so areola's not hard, fat's not hard. This is connective tissue, adipose. Or if you want to, <clears throat> if you want to say connective tissue, prop, uh, that would be A, and then B would be proper, loose adipose. But you can either do connective tissue as A, and adipose as B, or connective tissue as A, and proper, loose adipose as B. I always remember that it's in the breast because the breast is made up of fat and breast tissue. It's made up of fat and breast tissue. And that's why if you lose weight, you lose volume in your breast because if you lose weight, you're losing the fat component and you have less and you're left with the breast tissue. And then this is a uh, looser reticular tissue. This is in lymph nodes in the spleen in places like this, it forms a meshwork. I think of it as a framework for those scavenger cells and monitoring cells to hang out and monitor the lymph and monitor the blood flow, looking for uh, microbes and viruses and non-self things. Spleen is one of the places it's located. It's also located in lymph nodes. And like I say, this to me looks like, this to me looks like, uh, hold on, I'm gonna get that phone. Hello? Yes. Sorry. I have a friend that's had some surgery and I told him to call me if they had any problems. I didn't do it surgery, obviously, have, but I, uh, uh, it's a good friend. So I told him to call me. Uh, this reminds me of grapes. Okay. And obviously that wasn't that friend calling. Uh, I'm sure you get a lot of calls too. Uh, looks like a grapevine with grape tissue, but this is connective tissue and it's reticular tissue. Uh, and it's found in the spleen, lymph nodes, and other places like this. So you can see the value of these slides. Number one, it gives you answer A, it gives you answer B, and it gives you answer C. Okay, so these are a good, and it gives the, you the picture of what it's going to look like in the lab practical. So these are actually very good slides to study from. Okay, and to have available when you're trying to learn the material and actually when you're taking the exam. The whole purpose of the exam, of this exam, 
since we don't do it face to face, we don't do this an actual test, I try to make it a learning experience, okay? And so by looking at these slides today and having these available to you, and also don't forget you need to watch the video, okay? You need to watch the video as you get somebody else explaining about the tissue. And by that time, by the time you've watched the video, by the time you've, you've uh, done, looked at these slides and listened to two lectures, you have, a you have a fairly good understanding, in fact, you have a pretty good understanding of what tissue's all about, okay? Now we go to the, we're gonna get to the dense regular, okay? Dense regular connective tissue, high tensile strength, and as you as you recall, it is in tendons and ligaments. Ligaments connect bone to bone, and tendons connect muscle to bone. Okay, and this is this is connective tissue. This is regular. Okay, our regular, our proper dense regular. Okay, connective tissue, proper dense regular. So this would be answer A. This would be answer B. Okay. And where is it located? It's located in tendons and most ligaments, okay? And this is what it looks like. All the fibers are in the same direction. The only thing that you could, the only thing that you could, where can you find the video? Under the lab. The video is in the lab module, okay? Lab module under uh, tissues, where the lab practical is under instructions, okay? This is where the regular ligaments, excuse me, these are all the fibers are in, are in uh, the same direction. You might think it looks a little bit like cardiac muscle, but remember, you don't see a whole lot of nuclei there. You don't see a whole lot of nuclei. So that was dense regular, okay? You don't have to say proper, but y'all probably should say dense regular, okay? Dense irregular. Uh, form sheets rather than bundles, okay, because the tension's in multiple directions. It's in the dermis, fibrous joint capsules, you know, the capsule around the knee, fibrous coverings of some organs, okay? And so this is dense irregular connective tissue. Dense irregular connective tissue. It's in a, uh, must be a different stain than the one we saw for previously. But this is dense irregular connective tissue going in, in, in other directions. And then this is elastic tissue. We didn't have a slide on that, I don't think, in the other. But this is elastic tissue. This would be in your big arteries, okay? And you, the reason you have a lot of elastic tissue, okay, so it'd be connective tissue. It'd be dense elastic. And the reason you have a lot of the elastic fibers is when you get a pulse out of your, out of your heart, when you get a pulse out of your heart, uh, that pulse causes the vessel to expand because of the pressure. You'd like that vessel to go back to its original shape. So you have a lot of elastic fibers, okay? You have a lot of elastic fiber. Now you have elastic, you have elastic cartilage, okay? But this is a this is a connective tissue that is a dense connective tissue, okay? That is, that is differentiated from the, car, from the ear cartilage. Remember, the ear cartilage has the round things uh, that we were trying to figure out what they look like. Uh, and uh, so you can differentiate that. You can almost see that this, you know, this looks like the aluminum of a blood vessel. So now we have the three types of cartilage. We have hyaline cartilage, elastic cartilage, and fibrocartilage, okay? Hyaline cartilage is the most abundant, okay? It's the gristle, all right? If you're eating cartilage, it's the gristle, okay? Elastic, similar to hyaline, but more elastic fibers, that's in the ears. Then fibrocartilage is the one in the intervertebral disc and in the knee. And this is hyaline cartilage here, okay? This is hyaline cartilage, so it'd be connective tissue. Highland cartilage, okay, you need to say highland cartilage or elastic cartilage so that I know that you know what it is. Or you can say cartilage, highland, either one. But this is highland cartilage here, okay, and it is found in a number of places that are listed in here. This is the cartilage that's found in the ear as opposed, this is elastic cartilage as opposed to dense elastic connective tissue, okay. This is elastic cartilage, all right. And this may, you know, 
it might look like, you know, this might be a bone with bone marrow in it. Okay. That might be what that is. Bone with bone marrow in it, red bone marrow, and then maybe some white, uh, some ye yellow fat, which is staining white or something. I don't know. Or it could be a, a, a tree transected with the center part of it, uh, gone or something like that. Whatever, you know, I, I, you know, you used a lot of clues if you had to do things like this by memory uh, or just memorize the slides. But this is what, this would be connective tissue is A and be elastic cartilage is B. Okay, connective tissue is A, elastic cartilage is B. And then C, the location would be in the ear. Okay. And then finally, this is fibrocartilage. Okay, this is fibrocartilage, uh, which is the intervertebral disc or in the knee joint. Okay intervertebral disc it reminds me it's the thing that goes around the outer boundary of the intervertebral disc uh, because there's a gel-like material called a nucleus propulsa inside the disc but you can just, just remember intervertebral disc and so this would be part a would be connective tissue part b would be fibrocartilage okay bone okay we have osteons we have osteocytes and don't worry about the about the just be able to recognize this as connective tissue and bone connective tissue and bone you can't miss it okay like i said if uh, we're face-to-face -face meeting the second time we go through the slides i do my little you know you'd have to be a bonehead to miss this one but this is an osteon here which is the functional unit of a uh, this is this is hard bone obviously there's there's spongy bone and then there's a uh, hard bone this is the hard bone okay the uh, cancellous bone, okay, uh, you know, primary makes up long bones, the outer part of long bones, and we'll learn that when we get to bones, so don't worry about that. These things here are where the osteocytes live in these little lacuna. These are where the vessels are, the nerve artery and vein for the bone, and if we had a higher power, we'd see these little channels that connect the uh, lacuna for nutrition for the osteocytes. And then this is blood here. Okay, this is blood, connective tissue, blood, connective tissue, blood. You're not going to have to know the individual names of these components. Okay, that's chapter 17 in anatomy and physiology too. So that's connective tissue. We have three types of muscle tissue. Okay, we have skeletal muscle, voluntary muscle, uh, multinuclei striated or banded. Okay, and like I say, this is this, that's chapter nine and 10 when we do muscles. Primarily in chapter nine, we'll learn about all these striations, okay? So this is, type of tissue is muscle, uh, that'd be A. Uh, uh, B is skeletal muscle, okay? And where it's located, located in uh, muscles attached to bones, okay? Muscles attached to bones. Uh, because they're not, you know, this is the muscle, this voluntary muscle, muscle for motion, okay? It's not a muscle. That's, a, that's in the heart or a muscle that surrounds a hollow viscous organ, which is a smooth muscle. And it's hard to miss this because of the beautiful striations here and the, and the multiple nuclei there. And we have cardiac muscle found only in the heart. Uh, the giveaway of that is branching in these intercalated discs, okay? Don't forget these, these, these are the discs, it's called intercalated disc, okay? Intercalated disc, and these are responsible for attaching one fiber to the next, one fiber to the next. So this type A is muscle, that's the general type of tissue. Type uh, answer B is cardiac muscle, where is it located? It's only located in the heart. And this is the picture of it, it has nuclei here and has some branch, has branching and it has these intercalated discs, which is the giveaway for the cardiac muscle. Smooth muscle, walls of other hollow organs, uh, it's involuntary, so it's in blood vessels, small blood vessels, and in uh, the GI system and in some parts of the respiratory tract. But primarily, and so if you just said walls of hollow organs, that's okay for location. This is A would be muscle, B would be smooth muscle, okay? And so this is smooth muscle, okay? It is smooth muscle. It has all these nuclei in as opposed to dense regular connective tissue. Dense regular connective tissue might look like this, except it doesn't have all these nuclei here, okay? And that would be the only thing it could be confused with, with dense regular connective tissue, except this has multiple nuclei here. And then finally, nervous tissue. has not much to say about that. 
type of tissue is nervous, okay? Uh, specific name is nervous tissue. Where is it located? It's located in the brain, spinal cord, or nerves, okay? And so that's nervous tissue. And those are all the slides, okay? Those are the 21 slides that are on the lab practical. Those are the 21 slides that are on the lab practical. And so that's why I wanted to go over these slides today because we, we went over them uh, last uh, on Monday, but this has a whole lot more information. It's available to you. Obviously, it's in a uh, PDF file, but you can go in and you can, you can uh, uh, look at these slides, has all the information that's, a, that's you need for the lab practical. Don't forget the lab practical is due in two weeks. And the lab practical, here again, is not like a routine lab it's not like a routine lab uh, assignment where if you decide you're going to blow it off and just take a 10% deduction, you can do that. Now, this would be a face-to-face -face actual test or actual quiz if we were in a face-to-face -face class, okay? And so you come in with an answer sheet and I'd show you the slides and you write the answers down. So there's a two-week deadline. So you have plenty of time to do it. It's not going to interfere with your exam. You don't need to start on it till after your exam if you don't want to, okay? Uh, but it is something that is due on Monday, at, you know, two weeks from uh, a couple of days ago. She still have 12 more days. Uh, but it is due at 11.55 that day. And if you turn in late, doesn't give you 10% deduction, still go on, turn in late, get you zero, okay? In fact, you can't turn it in late because as opposed to the routine labs, which have a ultimate deadline of December 15th, but a, a due date of whatever the lab due date is, if you turn in after that and do all the answers, you get a 10% deduction. Here, you get a, you're not gonna be able to turn it in because once it's past the uh, deadline for turning in, it, they, you won't be able to upload it. And so that's all I've got to say. So what questions you have for me today? The test is now open. It is, it is due in one week from today. It opens up, excuse me, it's not, it's not open, it'll open up at noon. Okay, the test will open up, open up at noon. It's a one-shot thing. Uh, it consists of multiple choice, uh, matching multiple choice, true, false, and short answer. I believe all the short answer at the end, so that gives you a chance to go through everything. You can go back and forth between questions, but you can only see one question at a time. You, uh, you cannot see the whole test at one time. You can do one question, you can go back and forth, okay? Uh, the, you have two hours to do it, so once you press begin, you have two hours to do it. At the end of two hours, it's gonna submit. If you start with only 55 minutes left to the deadline, if you start at 11 o'clock at night on, on two weeks from today, you're only gonna get 55 minutes because it's gonna submit at 11.55. So whether you're done or not, whether you're done at not, it will submit at two hours, okay? Whether you're done or not, in two, to, in two weeks at 11.55 p.m., it will submit. So do not wait to the last minute to start your test because you're only going to get to 11.55 on the deadline, okay? Uh, you have, like I say, you have, a week, you have a week to do the test. Uh, you can do it your own, You can do it morning, noon, and night, whenever you want to do it. There is no, is no uh, uh, thing. There is no proctoring on this exam. Uh, I'm not going to do any proctoring on the first two exams. I don't know about exam three and four. OK, uh, they were in flux about what proctoring systems we want to use, and I'm not familiar with any of them. We won't obviously there won't be any. I won't require you to go to campus to take the exam. I, you know, I haven't been to campus since spring since before spring break, and I don't know. I'm not requiring anybody to go to campus to take any kind of exam. And I'm not even sure they're doing pro, I'm, I'm pretty sure they're not doing in, on campus proctoring. Uh, so that's all I've got to say. Are there any questions for me? Let me look at the chat and see if I've answered everything. Video again. Uh, answer that. Okay. Yeah, I don't see anything I haven't answered. As far as grades, what is, what about as far as grades? The exam the exam will be graded within one week. Okay, 
while you're taking the exam. In other words, this week, I'm going to start grading on the other stuff that you turned in. Okay. I grade in batches. I usually wait till after the deadline and I start grading that stuff. No, because I have to grade the short answers. Okay. So it's not automatically put in. I don't believe I don't believe there's any diagrams on the test. Okay. I believe it's just uh, word questions. Okay. I don't think I'm pretty sure on uh, the test, there's not any diagrams at all. Okay. In other words, the matching, the matching, you know, matching questions are essentially multiple choice questions, except you're, you're asking a different question each time to call the questions different each time with the same answers. Okay. So that's what a matching question is. And the matching's one for one. There is no question. There is no answers that are uh, uh, used two or three times. It's all one for one. Each one will be used one time. And, uh, 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 and you will, you know, they'll all be used. So if there's, if there's three answers, there'll be three questions. If there are five answers, there'll be five questions. You're welcome. Any other questions? All right. Well, you've got your, you've got some work to do. Have a great weekend. Remember, as always, I say, make sure you designate and take at least one day off. Okay. And if you have any, you know, have any problems or having questions, just take, uh, uh, send me an email. I prefer using the school system because that way I don't have to look on my Canvas app to see if anybody's emailed me. The Outlook app, you know, has, if somebody emails me, it, it comes up right away. Thank you very much. And I will see you next Monday.